Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Boys and girls, have you ever been in a submarine? Or have you ever gotten inside a diver suit and gone down into the depths of the sea? <laughs> I suppose not. After all, most of us are land lovers, lake sailors at the best. But what would you do if you knew that a submarine was stuck at the bottom of the ocean, and meanwhile the crew was suffocating? Why, you'd try to get them out, of course. But the big question would be how to do it. Well, let's find out what Bill and the Rangers did in such a situation as that. Keep your ears glued to the radio for the story of 20 Fathoms Under the Sea. Man, this blue oil really burns up the rails. I wonder how fast we're going, Bill. I don't know, Henry. There's a stretch of track ahead where the engineer pushes her up to 93. Wow, 93 miles an hour. Oh, that's plenty fast in any man's book. Yep. <laughs> Just a little faster and I can run at high speed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, say, Bill, do we have to eat the fish we catch in this trip? Well, that all depends on what kind of fish we catch, pal. Some ocean fish aren't edible, of course. Probably eat some of them. Oh, I don't like fish that much. Not ocean fish, anyhow. Brook trout, yeah. But not even too much of them. You don't know what's good for you, Henry. Fish good brain food. Make you plenty smart. Oh, I don't believe that, Gray Wolf. <laughs> Besides, even if it is true, there must be other kinds of brain food. There, yeah, there sure is, sonny. Huh? What other kind, Stumpy? Noodle soup. <laughs> oh, Stumpy. <laughs> Uh, you walked right into that one, pal, with both eyes open. Yeah, mouth too. <laughs> I just wanted to show you young fellas that I'm still perkin'. Bill, you seem to know Ben Benson pretty well. How come? Well, Ben's an old salvage man, Grey Wolf. And he's brought up some historic wrecks on the bottom of the sea in his time, including several maroon submarines. I got to know him when I was in the Navy. Oh, is he retired now, Bill? Well, yes, yeah, sort of forced retirement, you might say, Henry. What do you mean by that? You see, Ben's son was accidentally killed during the salvage operation. Ben always felt he himself was responsible. So he quit the salvage game and bought himself a power launch to take fishing parties out on. Rather a sad ending for the old gent. Does he show his sorrow, Bill? No, not as a rule. He has times when he's very quiet, though, and he looks out to sea. I feel sorry for old Ben. Dinner served in the dining car. Dinner served in the dining car. First call for dinner. Dining car, four cars forward. Hey, that's what I've been waiting to hear all day. Let's go before my stomach leaves my body and goes by itself. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's head for the chuck wagon before they run out of food. Then we can get ready to get off the train. Stops on this side of the bay at Harbor City, then he crosses over to the main station. Let us out right at the sign that says Ben Benson, Gabby. Sure, mister, any way you say. This waterfront sure looks quaint, Bill. All the line skippers along here must be old sea dogs, huh? That's right, Bill. Most of these men are retired seamen. I guess there's some mighty tall sea yarns spun around these wharfs. That'll be two fifty, mister. All right. Here you are, friend. No, that's all right. Oh, thanks, mister. Come on, pal, let's go. I want to keep the cab standing any longer than necessary. Well, sure, Bill, sure. I got my big feet tangled around the bank. There. Now I'm able to move. Hey, there's old Ben coming from the dock now. Mm, he looked like a real sea dog. 
Him still walk with rolling ship. <laughs> you and he'll make good friends, Grey Wolf. Hello, Ben. Good to see you again. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Bill, how are you? Uh, it does my salty eyes good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. The same to you. Ben, I want you to meet three of my rangers. They're also my closest friends. Henry Scott, Gray Wolf, and Stumpy Jenkins. Fellas, I'd like you to meet Ben Benson. Oh, hi, Ben. Oh, Howdy ben. there, Ben. <laughs> well, it's mighty fine to meet you, fellas. I see you have uh, old men of the woods in your service, too, Bill. Uh, Stumpy's uh, got quite a bit of moss on his uh, north side. Sure, we got old men in the woods. What do you see dogs think? You ain't got no lease on old age. Just because you're preserved in salt water. I noticed quite a few barnacles in your hull, you old Wallace. Uh, hey, uh, Bill, uh, uh, maybe uh, we better go home. It's all right, pal. They've got a twinkle in their eyes. They're talking to each other like ducks to water. Glad to have you aboard, you old muskrat. I don't suppose you've ever been in anything larger than a rowboat. Nope. <laughs> and I stay out of them as much as I can. I get all the water I want in the bathtub. <laughs> oh, you're all right, Stumpy. Yeah, you ain't so bad yourself, Ben. <laughs> well, come on aboard the swordfish, fellas. Ain't no sense standing on the dock when you can stand on the decks of the best sea-going lawns you float. When we shove off for fishing grounds, Ben. Right at sundown, Grey Wolf. We'll be where the big fish are at dawn. <laughs> Jones, I gave the order to surface this craft. What are we waiting for? Well, the engine room isn't responding, Captain Nagel. We've sounded the surfacing signal twice. Well, are they sleeping back there? I'll get them on the intercom. Let me have your headphones, Sandal. Hello, engine room. What's the trouble down there? Can't you hear the signals? Well, what do they say, Mr. Jones? What? Are you sure? No, no, stand by while I tell the captain. Skipper, the ballast tank pumps have broken down and refused to work. A vast servicing and stand by. I'm going aft. Keep those headphones on for my orders, Jones. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Mr. Antonio, what's it look like inside the pump? It looks bad, sir. The main rod's broken clean in two, and it tore the cylinder to shreds. Hmm. Can you fix it? I sure can, Skipper, but with those gouges in the cylinder wall, I, I doubt if I can get enough compression to handle the ballast tanks. What caused the break, Mr. Antonio? Weren't these pumps inspected before we put to sea? Well, they certainly were, sir. I inspected them myself. I'll see what I can do with the pumps. Very well. Report to me on the bridge when they're repaired. Aye, aye, sir. Now hear this. Attention all hands. Now hear this. The captain's going to speak to the crew. All right, men. Put your fears in your sea bags and listen to me. Most of you are green submariners, but I've gone through this before, and so have your trainers. Jones, McLaughlin, Antonio, Savage, Boyd, Prince, and the torpedo men. They've gone through the same experience, and they're still alive. Let's not get panicky. <coughs> Remember an old axiom. He who loses his head may lose his life. Stand by for further announcement from the bosun. Now hear this, men. The captain will inspect the ship at 1,400. Mr. Jones, I want you to keep the crew busy. 
Keep them working so hard, they won't have time to get panicky. That's a direct order. After you inspect the ship, what should I have them do, sir? Clean it again? That's right, Mr. Jones. Even if they have to do it with toothbrushes. Your job is to keep the men busy. Let Mr. Antonio and his men worry about the pumps. Mind if I join you, Ben? Huh? Oh, no, of course not, Bill. I didn't hear you come on deck. I saw you sitting out here from my cabin window. Then I joined your fellowship with the sea in the quiet of the night. Oh, a fella can do a heap of thinking when there's just the sea and himself. But he's a good listener, Bill. Yes, Ben. The sea never tells any secrets, either. He just listens, keeps the confidence of her sailors, and hides their thoughts in the deepest waters. I guess it's the sea that's kept me on an even keel since Frank died. Whenever I get depressed, I... I put out to sea and have a long talk with the Lord. I don't know if I'm right, but the Lord seems so much near out here. Ben, when are you going to stop beating yourself for Frank's death? I don't know, Bill. I keep hearing his last words. He kept kept calling for oxygen. Just can't seem to get them last few moments out of my mind. But it was an accident, Ben. You couldn't help it if his lines fouled in the sunken wreck. Why put yourself on a shelf away from everybody? The world needs some good salvage men like you. That's the way I want it, Ben. How can men put confidence in a salvage man who, who let his own son die under the water? I just couldn't have men depending on me for advice and guidance below the water. Ten fathoms down is an awful place to be trapped by, by an old fool who doesn't know what he's been doing, Bill. Fifteen fathoms is, is an intolerable place for it to happen. You know, I'm sorry, Ben. I didn't intend to get you all riled up. I guess I'll turn in now. Wait, wait a minute, Bill. Yes, Ben? It's done me good, to to get some of this off my chest. I know you understand. Sure, Ben. I understand. Hey, I got one! Hey, it must be a whale! Grab him, Grey Wolf, before he falls overboard! Uh-huh. We got him. No sense for us to fish for fish and Henry, too. Not for real now, Sonny, before you run out of line. Take a couple of turns on your reel every time he gives you a slack, Henry. Hey, there's a fish. He just jumped out of the water. Boy, what a whale. <laughs> kind of small for a whale, Sonny. <laughs> Maybe his mother didn't feed him when he was young. You fellas help Henry get his fish aboard. Old Ben's upset about something. I'm going to find out what it is. You go ahead, Bill. Henry got fish pretty well in hand now. Ben, feeling all right? Sure. Why? Do I look sickly? No, but... You're acting strangely. What's wrong? I don't know, Bill. I, I just have the feeling that there's something going on under these waters. Huh? What do you mean, Ben? I can't explain it, Bill. I, I just got a feeling that there's trouble under this part of the sea. What'd you say we stop fishing for a while and cruise around? Perhaps we can spot something wrong. Well, sure. I'll tell the fellas to haul in their lines and you can get underway. Now hear this. All hands man your stations. The captain's going to try to surface the ship again. Quartermaster, sound the surfacing signals. 
Mr. Jones, tell the chief engineer to report continuously what happens in the engine room. Aye, aye, Skipper. Captain Nagel, Mr. Antonio wants to talk to you. Uh, use my headphones, sir. Very well. Yes, Antonio, what's wrong? It's no use, Captain. I can't get enough pressure in the pump because of the damaged cylinder. Can't you replace the cylinder? I don't have an extra cylinder, sir. If I get out of this one alive, I will have, though. Captain, the, the ship's listening to the port side. If she lays over any more, we'll get chlorine. Cut your engines, Mr. Antonio. Cut them now. I'd better check the storage batteries to make sure they didn't spill. We can't have any chlorine gas now. Very well. Let me know how you make out. Mr. Jones, release the distress float and force some oil and debris out of a torpedo tube. We'll have to hope and pray that somebody sees our cry for help. It won't be long before we've completed our 500th flight across the Pacific. That's right, Bob. We've flown everything from the King of Siam to a plane load of penguins. Hey, Bob. What's that oil slick down there? Where? I don't see it. Just a minute. I'll circle around. We'll cut down our speed. I see it, Red. There's a sub-distress float down there. And there's some debris down there, too. That means there's... Yeah, a... Red. A pig boat's down there, and it's in trouble. Head for the field, and I'll radio the naval base. Right. Boy, Ben, you sure know how to cook. This is a wonderful breakfast. No second emotion, pal. Then you do the job of brown. Too bad me can't eat more. Me willing, my stomach say it had enough. <laughs> yes, sir. If anything I like more than good food, it's more of it. We interrupt this program to bring you hey, an listen. important news bulletin. A transoceanic passenger plane reported sighted a Navy sub-distress float 25 miles off the coast, about opposite the famous 10-fathom yeah, shallows fishing ground. Swordfish. They ain't very far from where we was fishing. Keep tuned to this station for more news about the distressed sub. We'll interrupt this program as soon as we find out more from the Navy. Ben, you were right when you had that feeling of trouble under the sea. Ben had that feeling? I sure did, son. That's why we stopped fishing and cruised around a while. They must have released the distressed boy after we left. Uh, we think Navy can handle this well. They have plenty of good salvage equipment. That's right, Grey Wolf. They've got specialists for that kind of work. They've also got the latest submarine rescue gear. Well, they can handle it all right. It sort of gives you a queer feeling when you find out that we were having a good time while right under us a tough situation was developing. How deep is it out there, Ben? Twenty fathoms, Stumpy. The ocean bed suddenly drops after the ten fathom showers. A hundred and twenty feet of water, eh? I'm sure glad I'm not stuck down there in that sub. <sighs> How much more oxygen have we got, Mr. Antonio? About ten hours of play, Skipper, that's all. If you stop the men from working, we might be able to stretch it at twelve hours. That's right, Skipper. The men would need so much oxygen to... They were resting. I appreciate your counsel, gentlemen, but I'm the captain of the ship. I don't want a sub full of maniacs, so keep them busy. I feel sure that help will come. The fishing boat or plane will see our distress boy and that oil slick. What do we do if they don't see our distress signal or, or they don't recognize what it means? Mr. Jones, we've got ten hours to think up an answer to that question. Broadcast more news of the sub. Well, be patient, Sonny. Things like news take time. Uh, maybe so, but just the same, it would be good to hear news. 
Hey, quiet, fellas. The music stopped. Perhaps I've got another bulletin. We interrupt this program again to bring you more news about the sunken submarine. Navy spokesmen are rushing salvage ships to the scene of the disaster. The ships won't arrive until tomorrow morning as they're with the fleet on maneuvers. The submarine that's distressed is an old type ship used only for training purposes. Stay tuned to this station for more news on the submarine disaster. Turn that noise box off, Henry. Uh, sure, Bill. What's eating you? Plenty. Those salvage ships aren't going to arrive in time. The old-style subs haven't that much supply of oxygen. I'm going ashore and find a telephone. Ben wants to know where I'm at. Tell him anything. Anything but what I'm actually doing. Commander Bill speaking. Commander, this is Bill Jefferson. I'm a forest ranger. Oh, yes, Mr. Jefferson. I've read about you from time to time. What can I do for you? Commander, your salvage ships aren't going to arrive in time to help the men trapped in the sub, are they? Well, I don't exactly know about that. This is off the record, Commander. Maybe I can help the lads trapped in the sub. You're sure I'm not going on record? Positive. That's a promise. All right. For obvious reasons, we couldn't tell the newsmen that the rescue ships wouldn't get there in time. A mistake was made in letting all the salvage ships go with the fleet. Whenever the training sub is operating, there's supposed to be a salvage ship here. For the simple reason, it's an old sub. You say you can help, but how? You know Ben Benson? Yes, I know him. He's a fine old man. He used to be a great salvage engineer and sub-rescue man. Say, now I get what you're driving at. Then you approve? Well, by all means. I'll give you all the cooperation and men you need. When can you and old Ben start work in the sub? I wish we could right now, Commander. But it isn't that simple. I've got to talk Ben into it. He's lost self-confidence since the death of his son. Yes, uh, I know. I'm going to talk with him right now. I'll let you know how I make out. And your answer is still no, Ben. Yes, Bill, it's still no. But why? Give me one good reason why. Because I... You know why. Ain't that a good enough a reason? No, it isn't. There are 20 men facing certain death because you haven't buried the dead, Ben Benson. What do you mean, I haven't buried the dead? Your son's gone. All the worry and fretting and self-accusation won't bring him back. Besides, it was an accident. But you can do something for 20 men who are still living. Do this for Frank's sake, Ben. It's what he'd want you to do if he were right here beside you. No, Bill. It's no use. Who could trust a man who would... Stop beating yourself, Ben. I trust you. I'll put on a diving suit and go down and work on the sub if you'll tell me what to do. You... You trust your life in my hands, Bill? Yes, even in 120 feet of water. What do you say now, Ben? No, Bill, I won't do it. Ben, I always understood that men of the sea had guts and determination. Ben, you're a jellyfish, a disgrace to the memory of your son. Them harsh words, Bill. They cut pretty deep. I'm sorry I had to say them, Ben. I'm thinking of the 20 men more than I'm thinking of you. All right, let's drop it. I'll call the commander and tell him no. Bill, Bill, wait a minute. I've said all I'm going to say, Ben. Uh, you're going to call the commander now? Yes. Well, uh, tell him then. I hate it with all that's in me, but... I'll be ready to begin rescue work in two hours. Once this job is over, they'll never, nobody will ever get me on a salvage mission again. The tide's running out, Bill. You'll drift over to the sub. 
She lays about a hundred yards, start stern. Okay, Ben. Put the diving helmet on. I'm ready to go. Good boy. Uh, the escape hatch is rigged to on the winches. When you're ready for it, we'll lower away. As soon as you get the helmet on, let's test the intercom. Be careful, Bill. If you get into trouble, holler and we'll pull you right up. I will, pal. Don't worry about me. You sure you're not come up too fast? Or you get bends from changing water pressure, Bill. Say hello to Davy Jones, Bill. Tell him I ain't heard a word from him for so long that I thought he moved. <laughs> ben, put the helmet on. These guys will keep me here all day. Uh, here you go. Uh, uh. All set, Ben? Yeah. Um, lower the platform into the water. I'll talk to Bill as he's going down. Hello, Bill. Can you hear me? Yes, Ben. The intercom's working fine. We're getting a good supply of air. Fine. Let us know when you feel the buoyancy of the water some, and uh, we'll stop the platform. Or you can ride it all the way to the bottom. I think I'll ride the platform all the way to the bottom. The oxygen's getting a little thin now, Ben. Okay, we'll step up the pumps. That's just right, Ben. I'll pass the oxygen hose down, and I'll put it along with me over to the south. Okay, Bill. But you'll find the coupling on the port side of the conning tower. Fasten the hose on, and we'll force the valve open with air pressure and give the boys some clean air. <laughs> You hear that? Somebody's outside the sub. You're right, Mr. Jones. It's a rescue diver working on the outside. Take the hammer and answer his signals. Right. It's the rescue diver, all right. Captain, it's happened. We're being rescued. Yes, Mr. Jones. And thank the Lord that somebody's armed just for signals. Inform the crew as to what's going on. Oxygen. They're pumping oxygen into the sub. Wait, Mr. Jones. They'll do that for half an hour. Then they'll lower the escape hatch. We'll begin to leave the ship. Ben? You did a great job. In about five hours, we'll have the whole crew out of the sub. It ain't easy bringing them out one at a time, but it gets finished eventually. <laughs> Don't thank me, though, Commander. Thank Bill. Oh, nonsense, Ben. You're the one who has the technical knowledge to make this operation a success. I only did what you told me to do. Ben, what are you going to do now after huh? this is over? Now, don't ask him, Commander. It's a sore point with him. I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> On the contrary, Bill. What? Um, what do you mean, Ben? I mean I'm not afraid anymore. Oh, that's wonderful, Ben. When did you get free of that fear? When I saw the top of your head piece sink under the water, Bill, then I, I knew I would never be afraid again. <laughs> So once again we see that one last ounce of courage is all that it takes to turn defeat into victory. Well, we'll see you next week for more adventure with Ranger!